Yes, good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of 60 Minutes Nigeria. It is a weekly current affairs program where we dissect national issues. My name is Ebu Sagbalao. On today's program, we'll be taking a look, an edict, analysis of a national issue, one that has given cause for concern, not only to citizens of this country, but to citizens in diaspora. And of course, world leaders have also shown interest. It has to do with the recent kidnap of over 300 secondary school boys from Kassina State uh, Science uh, Secondary School in Kankara. I, I must tell you <coughs> that so many Nigerians are still lamenting uh, <coughs> what happened. The state governor, uh, Masari, has also informed President Mahmoud Buhari about the development, about the situation that the kidnappers have made contact. Uh, Boko Haram actually claimed responsibility for the kidnap. And we understand that some students were able to escape and have been reunited with their families. But so many others are still missing. So we are looking at that. A daughter students in Casino State, as well as the security situation in the country. I have very distinguished personalities. I have with us a former <coughs> labor leader of uh, a renowned labor leader in Edo State, and now a distinguished and respected clergyman, Reverend Olu Adedibigwe. Nice to have, have you with us today. Good, good afternoon, Gwas. Okay. Also with us, a very distinguished lecturer is Dr. Stanley Edubo. Nice to have with us today. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. I also have a distinguished politician and, of course, um, a political analyst, Tony Alile. Nice to have with us today. Thank you for having me. Okay. <coughs> so, my panelists will dissect this national issue that has given cause for concern. We'll start with Reverend Olu Adirigbe, adopted students in Kassina State, security situation in Nigeria. What's your take, sir? Well, I want to sympathize okay. with the families of those students. And I want to sympathize with the history of this nation. Sympathize in the sense that we have no security in the country. <clears throat> the country is prone. In fact, what is going on is worse than uh, COVID-19. And to this extent, uh, I think the present government at the national level, they are sleeping and they should wake up. Because we cannot continue like this. We are just talking about Kavaral people, the 300 or something students have been uh, uh, kidnapped in Kankara. Kidnapped in, uh, and their state in Castina, in the hometown of the president of this country. There are many areas, in many states, and by the time the press men were shouting about the nation have been prone, that there's no, we are not secure, every state in the country of Nigeria, they have been occupied by the Boko Haram, they are in the forest of Esplanade in Edo State and others. For this now, it is time for us to wake up. One, we should not look for state security. Two, either we go on self-defense, let everybody get to carry a gun and uh, find out what, what, how we can survive. <coughs> and three, let every man or woman be conscious that, security conscious, and uh, make sure that we don't rely on any other person. We don't have security, we don't have police, we don't have uh, the soldiers, we don't have. Uh, let me put the military put to all. And by the time everybody is shouting that the, the, the president should wake up from sleeping, he's sleeping, he should wake up and, and retire all the service chiefs so that we can have peace in our country, or else that will be what we call uh, uh, protest of another side must stop. So it, insecurity now must stop. And any nation that cannot provide security for a citizenry, 
we we will not survive crisis. We will not survive peace. And then there will be crisis. Everybody will do things on his or our own. That is what is going on. Thank you. So that's why you see the agitation <coughs> that uh, Fulani ex men are doing whatever they want to do. The Yoruba, whatever want their own independent. Everybody now clear money for restructuring. It's already time to restructure the nation. So everybody know and how to govern themselves and live in peace. Thank you. We'll come back to you. Only today, uh, the Northern Groups um, planned a protest in Katsina State, but we understand they were addressed by some government officials and they decided to shave that protest. Well, it's all about bring back our boys. You remember, bring back our girls. Uh, the incident that took place in Shibok some years ago, uh, some persons believe that that actually contributed to the collapse of President uh, Goodluck Jonathan, uh, who did not win the election. That's, that's the school of thought, but that may not be true. Okay, we have Dr. <coughs> Stanley Edubo with us. What's your take on this situation? Thank you very much, okay. uh, viewers. My take in this issue is that Nigeria today, we have been living and relying on God, okay. not on the security that the condemnation is supposed to give to us. Because the security of the nation has failed totally, woefully. If I have to score them as a lecturer, I don't think I can even give them 1%. Now that's very serious. Yes. <laughs> so the situation is as serious as it's that? It's as serious as that. As a lecturer, you will even score the security agencies 1%. One percent. Why? Okay. How many reasons? Yes. Why wouldn't I score them? Because when I set an exam for my students, they write and I score them based on the what they look in. Okay. Like what the military or the security of this country has written for everybody, and for me in particular, they've not written anything. In terms of answers to your questions? Yes, yeah, they've not written anything because they cannot secure what's uh, the citizen. Like what? My Reverend has rightly said, a nation that cannot protect its citizen is doomed. Look at these are children that are in the school. School boys. In the funny school. <clears throat> Mr. Ambassador, please let us get our mind back. This is not the first time, this is the third time. If somebody made a if something happened, we said, okay, it's a mistake. The second time is a mistake, but the third time is never a mistake. Repeating the same thing. <coughs> 2014, Chibo, the girls were adopted. 2016, I said 2018, Dachi, they were equally adopted. 2020 again. I mean, they should wake up to their own primary responsibility. The service chiefs we have in the country today, they are all totally failure. I believe it is time for them to be what? <coughs> removed from the office. Let the presidency retire them. They don't have anything anymore as far as security to give to the nation. Let them bring in new growth so that they can inject new ideas into the system of the security of this nation. Because the service chief are still married. You see, this incident happened. Which meeting have they had? None. Because they don't have what to say. What is other strategy they were putting in place? Even when the issue, if we talk about security, the president, the most citizen of this country, is going to his own state and his own town. Are they supposed to be security at last there? Before the other, days before that time. I remember when we were in the primary school in those days. We said the president or the head of state is coming to a dead baby seat. You see all security in every nook and corner, every place flying all about. To make the place secured and intact for him, which means that the president is not even safe. If the president can go to his own state, and the evening, the day he got there, that was the evening that this incident happened, means it's not safe. <clears throat> If the president is not safe, who is then safe? But the military has assured that the president is safe in Dara. He's actually in Dara. That is what I'm saying. Yes. What is this? The, the, the Dara and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the Kalitara. What is the difference? What is the kilometer? What is the kilometer for Christ's sake? They are just playing politics with this issue. 
I believe it is time the Nigerians should wake up. The way we took the bull by the end goal, this time we are not leaving it for the youth. Everybody, all service chiefs must go. Thank you. Without no exception. Thank you. We'll come back to you. Let's get the thought of Tony Alile on this issue. A very crucial one at that. Uh, like I told you, uh, so many Nigerians are really concerned about the security situation in the country, especially the adoption of over 300 schoolboys uh, from the government uh, science uh, college in uh, Katsina State. Yes, Tony Alile. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. First of all, I sympathize with the family of these boys these school children okay. that were adopted. I sympathize with the nation. Okay. Since that cannot come from the president, I think I'm in the position to tell the nation that we are grieving. I think you are not the active president. <laughs> ah, well, I don't want to do that. Let me completely differ from the, my colleagues here that okay. not have spoken on this issue. Okay. Their point is geared towards a functioning system. They are performing solution in an ideal system. But unfortunately, I don't think what I am saying is an ideal situation. There is a motive behind all of these things that is yet to be unraveled for all of us to know what is going on. A situation where certain groups in the country can bear arms, subscripted arms, not barre, not two, three rounds of firearm, subscripted weapon, AK-47, AK-49, they brandish them from point to point unchallenged, while the majority, over 95% of the citizen, is on their mercy. Something is wrong. That is what I expect us to be looking at. What is this that is so wrong that we cannot call spade a spade? Certain individuals carry arms and the others don't. When I walk on the street and I am found with a pen knife to peel orange, I'll be prosecuted for carrying arms. But people walk about, I was in my village about two weeks ago in the Wonder local government. My ears were filled up from complaints from farmers, women, that they cannot even go to farm. They even pointed to two persons from the northern part of the country that lives in the community that you have to go and see in the morning to let them know you are going to the farm in your own place so that you don't get molested in the bush. And we are talking about service chief. Do we even have a country? Let's start with that. First of all, the way things are done in this country, I see that I spent 33 years in America. I've seen things work in, 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 in the place called country. We should stop calling this. We, should, we are not a nation, we are not a country. Because I don't know what our certain leaders are doing. I don't know why they are so comfortable in their respective homes. Maybe because they have enough money to get this state security around them and forget about the other citizens. There is so much going on in the country that we need to sit back and think. If in a civilized climate, you don't even need to tell the president to ask this in, uh, ineffective service chiefs to resign. The first incident that happened would have been enough for them to say, I don't think we are capable of handling this assignment given to us. They will resign honorably. But the whole country is calling on the president to say that these people, other than the fact they are, they are ineffective, they have even exhausted their time. They, they've gone past their retirement age. Then there is a reason why the president and the commander-in-chief of, of this republic, as it's called, will allow what is going on to be happening. But again, do we have a president? Where is our president? I will stop there for now. Okay, we'll come back to you. You can see that uh, this topic has generated um, a lot of emotion uh, because uh, my guests are really, really concerned 
about the security situation in the country, especially uh, because of the welfare of these boys um, being kidnapped. You know, secondary school boys, um, they are really worried. But we must say we have a country, uh, we must say we have a president, we must say that, yes, uh, there are challenges, and these challenges are meant to be surmounted. The issue now is how do we surmount these challenges? These are other issues we will discuss on this program. But let's get more uh, reaction uh, from Reverend Lua Adelibbe. Now, I know you are very concerned about the state of affairs. Um, some persons believe that the security apparatus, security architecture, we need to review, they need to review their strategies. And uh, some other persons believe that probably we need a state police. So you were actually hinting on that. So do you think this state police thing that really need to solve this problem? Yes, let me first uh, stand on a point. Okay. We have a country. Okay. We have a nation. Nigeria is our country. Yes. And uh, we have nowhere to go. And God has proved the nation wrong that if America can today be having a problem with their election and God can use, disappoint the owner of bus basket and uh, the, the owner of bucket and use basket to fetch water. That's God for you. If God can allow a do state, which is part of this country, conduct election without no problem, America is still battling. So we have a country, number one. Two, uh, I think uh, we should call the spade a spade. Two things is responsible for this thing that he, the last speaker I just uh, mentioned, technically. Okay. One, an attempt to religionize the country. I won't talk more than that. Okay. That a particular religion should take over the nation. And they have to do it by first starting the problem within their own system. So if they can conquer the area, the rest, they can go about it. But don't you think it's a few individuals that are trying to do Let that? Us, why why yes. can't we fish out the few individuals? Why do you talk about security? Okay. It's because the cabal are there. It's because the present government, actually the president, has expired. According to his, uh, according to the the, the the team of his party, but the leader of APC, no one uses a drug and expire. It's no more effective. The man has expired. But we are talking the situation where they want to stimulate this country. Two is the second point is that uh, people want to govern with by cook and miss. They want to just come in a short course, and an attempt also to make sure that. A particular cabal rule the nation. This is what is going on. Because, because, like he said, there was an announcement in Edo State and all other parts in the South South that every uh, every gun, every double yeah. barrel should be submitted to the Absolutely. To, submitted to, uh, the, the, to the state commission. Yeah. And yeah. in the same area, you find some who carry AK-49 going about. And it's a situation too that those who are our leaders, apart from political traditional rulers, the 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 the, the, great, the bread gained by the seat, it is sweet, later turn to gravel in their mouth. Many traditional rulers in this country, they close their eyes where their people are dying. So until the situation is nipped in the board. And secondly, the actual talk about state police. How do we actually go about And to go about state police. police, one, the state governors should wake up. Okay. The National House of Assembly, they, they, they are playing politics. They are, they, are, they, are, they are talking about I'm PDP, I'm APC, I'm uh, APGA, but their people are dying and they are, they are nourishing their pockets until they can be able to stand for the truth. And let us go look at look at all the commissioner of police in the south south. They are most of them are all our They are all of them. Most of them. But they are, they are all Nigerians. They are all Nigerians, but they are all Nigerians. They are all Nigerians. They are all, they are all okay. one particular tribe. So if if a, 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 a particular man is arrested and I can speak my language, let him go. Until you can be able to say the truth. Until you can be able to face the reality. Even a situation that happened here in Edo State, when when power that be use talks to go and open the, 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 the uh, prisoners. And we know that those who are involved, police know about them. And today, today, they don't say it is un ungovernable because of a situation like that. But what's the cause? Like, I, I, I was privileged to know that even the governor went to 
to, to control our prison. Give me the list of those escapees. They don't have record. Such a man to go to Abuja to look for how can I get the list and we have a controller here. What is he controlling? Let us first start. If the name has a to We have to first go to all these type of discrepancies, lapses, and people should be arrested. Like a man who shot somebody in, in America, the, the, the DPO was arrested. But uh, can you arrest a DPO? Can you even arrest a sergeant? So <laughs> that, that's what we are going. And a, a particular man was mentioned that he was contacting with, uh, with, uh, with these people who kidnapped the, the boss. And if the government knows Sakara or whatever is involved, making connection, and they are now using a particular religion group to negotiate, and we fold our hands, and we are clapping, and the government is comfortable in Daura village. So what, what are you now talking about corruption? So until we, the only person that cannot stand for the truth is corrupt. It's no matter of lying in your pocket with money or building houses. That's why the area, we should look for one state police. And how do you go about it? It starts from, from, lo from, uh, from local government, from local government to the states. If the state assembly stand up and lobby them other states, if other state move to Ondo to lobby, Ondo move to Oshun, Oshun move to Anambra, Anambra goes to whatever like that, and the South South put a look at that and let us want to see the president, or move, the, move, move and see the Senate president of Bajabia Mila, that this is what we want, people will wake up. But we are, we, are, we, are, we are suffering and we are laughing. Until we must be able to sacrifice. It is even most minister of God. We, we, we are putting the, the not a good luck. When some minister of God were using their play to carry arms or to, to start our money, we are, what happened to them? But today they have university and crowd. Until we be able to have conscience. Conscience is God the man. We have no conscience. We have no other country. We, until we have a, a national protest, everybody will go up. Minister of God, every uh, traditional ruler, let everyone go out and protest that enough is enough. If we are going to pet ourselves, we give butter and bread until that thing will turn us around our stomach. There will be no, there, there no restroom to go and pee. Thank that you. time is coming. Thank you, sir. We'll come back to you. But like I said, the opinions canvas here are the personal opinions of my guests and not of ITV. But they are very concerned about ensuring that. Nigeria becomes a very, very uh, peaceful country, a country where secured, where citizens can go about their legitimate uh, businesses and activities without fear of molestation or harm. That's, that's the concern of my guests. They should not be misunderstood. Okay, let's get the talk of uh, Dr. Stanley. Now, Dr. Stanley, what do you think can be done? Because with the adoption of these boys, some parents may be scared to allow their children to go to school. Mm -hmm. And what do you think should be done now to, to secure uh, our schools and institutions? And you have nobody to teach anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Well, uh, I think in, in like what I, I used to say, in every problem there is always a solution. Okay. One of the things that, because if we looked at it, before I even provide the solution, boarding school, Boarding schools are what many parents prefer okay. for their children because it gets the students intact, well disciplined, one well nurtured, mm. and they, they are focused with their books. There is the time to go and read, there is the time for them to go and eat, the time to sleep. There is the map out time for everything. Yeah. So, having said that, the solution so that parents can still have confidence in boarding schools. One, let there be security in the boarding schools. I will personally say that in each of the boarding schools, let even the Nigeria Civil Defense Secure it. Be there. Okay, NSCDC. NSCDC. They okay. carry arms. They carry arms. Let them go there. At least deploy them there. They station them there. They begin to have a protection hours, duties okay. that they are going to perform. Not to go there six to six. No. Because they can come anytime. Look at what happened in the Delta State. 
where those kidnappers went there. It was during the daytime. So let them be there. So that they roll the shift. If possible, give them their own mini station there. Okay. Like a post. A post. <coughs> let them be there. Then let there be a security alert. Just the way we have fire alert in the most of the organization today. Security alert of maybe abductions. Where people comes in. So that once the number comes in like that, the alarm raised okay. automatically. You don't need to switch it on. If Nigeria wants to do it, they can do it. The money is there. Okay. If that was an ideal situation. Okay. Nigeria is supposed to be an ideal country, sir. <laughs> yes, just make your point. So, <coughs> what am I trying to say? Then, again, have you said that? Look at the way then electrify the whole place. <laughs> if there is power, there is no power outreach, let there be a standby generator okay. that can give them the light. If you put on all the lighting system around the school, anybody is coming, once you will know. Circuit cameras. Oh, all over the places. Okay. Let there be a CCTV. Yeah, CCTV circuit cameras. cameras, okay. All over the places. Let there even be a lighting system along the fence. If there is any bush around, let them clear them to open way. So that anybody coming from a distance, you know, you sight it. Okay. These are all the measures and ways you can check the security. Okay. So that parents can still have confidence. Because I will tell you, many parents today, they are losing interest in boarding schools based on what is happening now. Thank you, Doctor. We'll come back to you. Um, Tony Alile, I know that you have a different opinion. Of but, course. Yeah, this is a country. Uh, you must accept that on this program. <laughs> this is a country. But a country faced with daunting challenges. Now, in your opinion, yeah. what do you think government should do to actually tackle insecurity? First of all, let us be sincere okay. to ourselves. So let us, if we want to say there is a country, just like you rightly said. Yes. There should be national consciousness. Nobody cares about Nigeria. That's the truth. Nobody. If I, if you and I go past a do state and enter on do state now, I will call you my brother first before anybody. I say that is a Benin man. Hmm? Okay. Not that is a Nigerian. It is the sixth time they put out there the ruling class that believe that some of them are born to rule. The Reverend mentioned something about the state police. Do we have to be told that the present system of a central policing system is not working? It's not working. The other day, immediately after the NSARS um, protest, the governor of this state reached out to the commissioner of police and practically begged them to come out to the street. You know what the commissioner said? They are watching me right now. He said, until I get authorization from Abuja. Are we talking about security here or we are talking about farmland? Until you get, assuming the IG is sleeping, when this terrible incident are taking place, we wait, wait until we wake up from his sleep. That alone is enough for us to know that this central policy system is still working. You will bring a DPO from Zamfara to Ugoneki in the world local government. Yeah. Who knows nowhere beyond that is office to come at police? Is that not fraudulent? I see Nigerian police system as another part of Nigerian agency created to employ the disadvantaged from the northern part of the country. That is it. Not less. Not less. Not so less. You, you, are you are conversing the issue of state police now. Of, How should we go about beyond beyond state police? Yes. We even need local police. How do we go about it? How do we? Don't we have? 
people from every state that are in the so we in the have a nice system. We have a nice system, system. Okay. from the beginning. Bring all of those yes, citizens. We have a nice system. Bring all, 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 all communities. Yes. 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 Bring all of those citizens that are policemen. Bring them to Edo. Okay. Take data to data. Take Ondo to Ondo. If they are not enough, because definitely they are not enough, because of the balance in recruitment, we recruit more. So that the DPO in Igobazua will be a man from of your southwest that you understand where uh, uh, Igokehe is, that knows where Umaza is, not somebody from Zamfara to come and police Igobazua and the the law for me. That is fraudulent on his own as far as I'm concerned. It will not take a process, it doesn't need rocket scientists to tell us to put our home together. If the national the, the sleeping national assembly wake up from their sleep and decided to do the right thing, if there is anything any word like the right thing in this country, yeah. they should set the motion in process, amend the constitution to allow for state police. The the, 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 the the other day, the president or you know, somebody gave out instruction that local policing should be encouraged. Community, in, police, yeah, community police in all states. And those states did their own recruitment. They trained their people. They are out there without arms. As far as I'm concerned, we were just jeopardizing the lives of those people that were recently trained. You want to go to a gunfight with a knife, you must be out of that person must be out of his mind. You train these young lads, put them out there, no arm, nothing. You want them to go and arrest the criminal. Does that make sense? What they are avoiding is the right of anyone to bear arms. If I want to borrow a key from what the Reverend said yeah. at the beginning, there is nothing wrong with everybody bearing arms so long as we can do verification. And make sure you are not a criminal. Yes. Without a criminal record, you have the right to bear armed. Seven things I can't say here. I understand. I go about on the street looking my left and my right. Do you know how many times I've been blocked by so called criminals on the street? Because they know they are the only one that is armed. They know that this man is not armed. If we were in an ideal society, with the four of us sitting here, there would be a minimum of four arms in our pocket. We respect each other. Back in the years when we were younger, in America when we were in school, doing many jobs, working at night, when you get off your job and you are going home, at the subway at night, that is where stake, you know, stake up takes place, where they rob people. But what do we do? With our winter jacket, we put our hand in the pocket and just sit down and point <laughs> like this as if we have a gun. Because they know that it's possible for me to have a gun, they walk past me. Yes, at first, when we are going to start it, it's going to be rough. But once it's properly conditioned and monitored, I think what the best thing for us to be agitating for right now is the right for every citizen, every legal citizen of this country without criminal record to be armed. Okay. When you have, you have, and I have, we respect each other. But the idea of supporting a certain section of the country to go about, there was there, there was this great, I mean, this crazy incident at uh, what do you call it, near Gwebiobu, on Rwanda, in Rwanda, in Rwanda, in recently, where the bandit came and kidnapped over 30 people, took them to the bush. They feel your skin just like you, you're looking good. If they see somebody like your skin, you're a big man already, they're going to take you into the bush. But when the vigilantes came out, we listened to their interview. They played it. Sir, these people don't have two heads. The only thing they have against us is they have AK-47. And us will send them out of our booth. Is that too hard to ask for? Okay. Is that too difficult for us to ask okay. for? Okay, Tonalila, we'll come back to you. You've made the points. Like I have said, my guests are very emotional today because they want a better society. But something happened today. Uh, only yesterday, uh, President Mohamed Buhari approved the opening of four land borders. <laughs> And uh, today, uh, it, with immediate uh, effect, today it was implemented. Uh, Semen border, the residents around Semen border jubilated today. Uh, let's just see what happened at Semen border this morning.
jubilation. The PD should allow to see that jubilation again. Uh, residents around Seme border, they were actually excited, they were happy that the border will be open. Now, the essence of this clip, of this footage, is just to remind us that actually uh, the border uh, was closed because uh, the federal government um, made frantic effort to actually prevent the smuggling of arms and drugs, illegal drugs, into the country. It was a strategy to actually improve security. So, did this strategy no. work? No. Let's start with Reverend Lua Uh Yes. It's not working. <laughs> okay. It will not work. Okay. As our, it's, they are going to jubilate about this. Those are just celebrate. Far now, they are not Nigerians. They are the same people. That the opportunity has come for them to do their smuggling business, and they have many corrupt Nigerians to pass them through to, to Lagos. And why are, we do, why are they jubilating? Is that only border that was open? Good. There are many borders in this country. Only this border, this border, and that of uh, Ogun, that was closed. Is that, is that no border in which my now escaped with his son? If that border was never closed. It has been open and that no, it could be, it could be illegal. Route. Route. No, all the northern border. It could be illegal. Quote to me. And before now, most of the northern borders have been open. Of course. And by now escape to the next country through that border with, with that, without with forfeit. Mm. So opening the border from the south is not a news. And there's nothing to write about. What we need, number one, is not opening or closing border. We need intelligent policing. If we like, give everybody one, each of us, which we, I agree that we should carry arms. So if we carry the first to live our life, that's what, what that, you watched that film those days, the first to live our life, first to fight. If you have gone, and you have gone, if you, if you are faster than me, well, that's so be it. Well, so be it. But we need what we call, where are the SSS? No. Where are the N N N N I A or whatever you call them? No, yeah. Where are they? We don't have them. And they are at Abuja, they are at the National Encounter with their past books to So it's intelligence policy you are but, talking well, about. Well, you have the intelligence policy. Before, before the Bihari got to his, uh, where he was embarrassed. So he might have gotten intelligence report. Please don't come. But the type of intelligence report we have is to prevent governor. Please do allow somebody to come to you. Don't shake hands with that man. It is lie. Just to put their purpose. But people are dying. If you have really SSS, you have SIB, you have intelligent reporting police who go and underground. Some will pretend to be mad. So many things in those days. And they will get facts and figure. We don't have intelligent police. Police begin to ask, spend money, not to go to rural area. How they can block routes. I mean, all that is. We are intelligent I mean, Where are they? The, 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 the head of army was accused of having houses in, the, in, uh, in Dubai. Dubai. See, today, no problem. If you have intelligent policy and the uh, intelligent army giving things, information, all this nonsense will not happen. But if you like, give everybody a for the 10 to go ahead without intelligent reporting, without intelligent investigation, we will not get anywhere. Nobody want, everybody want to, if everybody has to be a pastor in the church, who will be, who will say I mean? <laughs> so everybody has to be at a lot, and this community policy, God bless uh, Arase, Arase, uh, Solomon Arase brought that system, and the former is the best, of course, one of the best IG that Nigeria has ever produced. Why can't they give him a consultancy to do this work? But as far as he cannot speak another language, they will not put the right problem in the right way. What is giving us is putting a, a right peg in the right, you put the Minister of, of Petroleum, who oh, has nothing to do, he has no intelligence about that, man. it's from part of the country, you just another person will do the work yeah. and somebody will be signing. Yeah. Until we know the truth, and we, can be able, and we too want to vote. Tell me, I will not be surprised in the next election 2020, my now want to be governor of his, uh, of his state, because he has arrived. Until we can be able to put people, and like some people to have been I mean, court, our court is not even helping issue. Yeah, Some people have been, the, a, a court case has been reversed. After a man has been sentenced, then a pick court reverse it. Where, where are we going? In a state, in a country, where we have two injunctions from, from different courts, from the same court. 
So what do we things is a, a, a lame man carry load on his head. And he said, Oh, lame man, your loaf cough. He said, No, we are just looking at off, we don't look at that. You see, because the load the, the load started that coughing from, from God. The nation have have been have been doomed because of the voyagism of our brother, according to what he has said. Or let me remove brotherism. I, 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 I've been in a door for many years. All my children grew up here, they went to school there, they, if they want to work. They will not say, well, local government we apology. Local government apology. <laughs> and then I'm going, where I came from, to go and look for local government. Even when you are from over there, they will not take you as from, from beneath. Mm -hmm. Once you remove that stupid idea, that on, 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 go, on godly idea, and first the truth, we told these big, big men, thank God, and Operation Hand start. And so some people are now hiding their cars. So sometimes too, the, the rich also cry. And that's what is happening. But we, we continue to cry until we know how to amend ourselves, say the truth. Let us ask outside there. How do you want to ask him if it's right that they give it to him? The politicians who is a, 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 a counselor receive salary more than a professor in a country where we are. So we are let all these things are amended. And let all these things, this, 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 this uh, National Assembly, what do you call them? They are, they are, they are nonsense assembly. Because they are not focusing. They are not saying the truth. And that's what we are going there. Some people go on network news. You see some of the senators sleeping. Apart from already a few that you hear their name. And that votes. And that's the end. So please, please, the Nigeria in the next election, we should vote for it. It's our fault too. Because we have taken bread, taken shots. Only this last election, people disappointed with their money. Unless we have that policy. Then we will not move anywhere. Thank you very much. So for much. security purposes, intelligent policing. Okay. Both in the army, in the navy, and others. Intelligence right? policing. Yes. When we introduce okay. intelligent policing, we know what is going on. Thank you. And we are the armed robbers. They are, they are, we have, they are in the house of a landlord. They are in the street. But the moment you call police. <laughs> Thank you. Let us talk so far. <laughs> okay, Doctor Edovo. Now. Uh, we actually brought in the issue of that land border because it was a strategy by the federal government to actually uh, curtail uh, banditry, uh, illegal uh, uh, proliferation uh, of uh, uh, little, uh, arms, small arms, uh, illegal drugs into the country. Now, that decision has been reviewed. And the border so, has been continue. Okay. The arms ceased three years, two years ago. Is this only this year or last year? No, where, no, where is the ammunition? Where good. are the person arrested? Uh, those are where security. Are those are security issues that we don't have privilege. We also know because okay. if, we, if we hide the truth, we continue to have more problem. Such a man exposed, mm. and this is man who, who imported this social. He has been arrested. He's in social court. We don't want to know. When they now jail him, let us know. Uh, thank uh, you. I don't say they will okay. go to stretch her. <laughs> okay. Thank you very yes. much. Yeah. Mm. You will see. To start with, there was no need for those closures of borders. Okay. It was for their own selfish Absolutely. reasons or their gains. If you say you close a border because you don't allow illegal arms, drugs, name them. But I, I will tell you <laughs> authoritatively that it is when the Nigeria border is closed that we have more arms in this country. Okay. Carry out the statistics. It is when August last year, to date, look at the arms that are flowing in the country. So it was a good decision to have reviewed that. In fact, closure. there was no need. Okay. The closure of the border was to suffer the Nigerians. Okay, my closing remark, if not, I have a lot to say in that issue. But uh, let me just keep in this. Okay. That the, the openings of the border, as far as I'm concerned, has not even done anything to the Nigeria because we are used to the 60. Because they just want to make the Nigerians poor and poorer. No, but I don't think that's it. I don't think that's the situation. That's what the situation is. Because you're looking at it, mm -hmm. when they close the border, you see the skyrocketed ri uh, rises in prices of everything. That even the staple food, even mm -hmm. opening the border, is a rise. The, is local, the local rice was even more expensive. Hey, opening the border now, is rice allowed? No. They want to encourage local production. 
uh, according to the local production act, uh, the the value value rise rise is, is twenty six thousand. <laughs> what do I say? Let's tell ourselves the truth. Okay. There are no happy issues. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you, um, Tony Alila. Your closing remarks. What do we for? Thank you, remarks. thank you very much again. We need to sit back and think. That's just what it is. Okay. Because what I see happening in this country is planned, is pre-planned. You know, it's a script that has been followed on a daily basis. It's only when we want to be politically correct, we use the word, hey, we are Nigerians, hey, I love them in. If you guys cannot see what I am saying, maybe I am the one that is wrong. We need to straighten up our system, our institution, all those non-active institutions that were created, that, you know, that were set up to create employment for a certain part of the country, should be closed down. What is ESCC and ICPC doing, for instance? We, just, we talked about uh, DSX, then we talked about NIA. What are they all doing? I'm going to see one in, in intelligence here. But anyway, I wouldn't say that. I think those service chiefs that are sitting there comfortably in their various offices has failed this country. They don't need to be told that they need to honorably resign and go home. Unless there's something else they are waiting for. 1984, Buhari was the president, was the head of state, essential commodity. In 2020, he's still the president, same essential commodity. So there's a treat to that. So I'll just leave it right there for the same mind to put the one plus one together. Thank you together very much. Two. Your closing Reverend. remarks, uh, Reverend Luade. Well, uh, the truth will spring out of the earth. Okay. My personal opinion, I think the president is afraid of coup. That is why he did not change, he has refused to change the, the service chief. But the earlier he do it, the better for him. Or there will be massive coup. Secondly, intelligent policy should be allowed, the police and army, they should wake up. And for now, every state should have their police. And everybody should have... And everybody have arms. should be allowed to have a licensed arm. The Constitution needs to address so they should have made the Constitution. Thank you and very the, much. the National Assembly or National Assembly should wake up for their responsibility Smoking to be able to fight for the people, the purpose which they have voted for. Thank you very much. My guests have made their comments. Reverend Lua a former Labour leader, he has seen it all, and he has canvassed the issue of state policing, intelligence policing, as a way out of the quadmire. Dr. Stanley Edobo has also uh, made his own point. I want to thank you for being a part of the program today. Thank you very much. And Tony Alile has said, yes, the issue of uh, arms. Nigerians should be allowed to, to bear arms. Yes. Uh, Self-protection. Well, the Constitution uh, needs to address some of the issues that have been talked about. I want to thank you, Tony Alile, for thank coming. Thank you very much. Reverend Lua, we thank you very much. Thank you. My guests out there, I hope you've enjoyed this week's edition of the program, 60 Minutes Nigeria. My name is Egos Agbalao. Next week, we'll be looking at another national issue. Keep a date with me. Until then, bye-bye.